Coming up on All About Android, it's me, Jason Howell. We've got Ron Richards, Wintwit Dow, and Florence Ion. So it's a little bit of a supersized show, but Flo dives deep into her feelings on the Z Flip 4 and the Z Fold 4, Samsung's latest uh, foldable devices. We also get her thoughts on Samsung's Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. And then we have a lot of news to talk about. Google is cutting down on its Area 120. That's its experimental division. The EU smacks Google across the face with a 4.1 billion euro fine for anti-competitive behavior on Android. And we take a trip through the map of Android throughout this show. Plus, answer your feedback next on All About Android. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is All About Android, episode 596, recorded Tuesday, September 20th, 2022. Samsung's foldable Fjord. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Wealthfront. Get a bonus $50 when you start investing with Wealthfront. So sign up today. Just visit wealthfront.com slash twit. And by ClickUp, the productivity platform that'll save you one day a week on work, guaranteed. Use code ANDROID to get 15% off ClickUp's massive unlimited plan for a year, meaning you can start reclaiming your time for under $5 a month. Sign up today at ClickUp.com. Hurry, this offer ends soon. And by Policy Genius. By making it easy to compare your options from top companies, Policy Genius can help you make sure you're not paying a cent more than you have to for the coverage you need. Head to policygenius.com slash AAA to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Hello, welcome to All About Android. This is your weekly source for latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howe. And I'm Ron Richards, and I will never get used to that. <laughs> and I'm going to it now, and I find it just fine. Yeah. <laughs> and? And I'm Florence Ion. Hi, guys. And Flo's like, so what changed exactly? So, yeah, for, the, what changed? so, so for those of you who watch the, the show when we record live on Tuesday afternoons, uh, five approximately 5, 5.30 Pacific time, uh, we used to do the opening billboards and there's a whole thing. We played music and stuff like that. And, and now when we start yeah. the show, it's just literally welcome to all about Android. We're your weekly source of, like, with no prelude. For for, ele- like for 11 to 12 years, we've had this yeah. like build up at the beginning One, of the show yes. that leads into what you see as the first thing on the downloaded version. And uh, but, now we don't have that. And so it kind of feels like we're just like jumping into cold water instead of like getting ready. It is. It's, it's a great analogy. And I will admit, I do miss the opening music because yeah. like it used to it get, gets you, used to get, get you, you pumped mode, up. Right? Yeah, gets you exactly. ready. Yeah. It's yeah. kind yeah. of like yeah. lukewarm water. Yeah. No, it's cold water. It's a little Android cooler water. than lukewarm. But yeah. hey, Flo, good to have you back. Hi. <laughs> hey. Uh, well, I wasn't here last month because I got COVID. Well, wait so. a minute. We had you on last month, didn't we? No, I was not on last month. No, she wasn't. Oh, mm-hmm. you're. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. The last time Flo yeah. was on was June 20. No, it was yeah, July, it was July 26th. 26th. Mm-hmm. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah July oh. 26th, two months ago. So much has happened in the world really? of Android. So many of us have uh, gotten sick well, either with or without COVID in that time. Exactly. Well. I'm I'm sick right now. In fact, I don't have COVID, but I've got my I got my kids at school for two weeks cold. Uh, um, yeah. But right, Flo, right. We, we are so glad you're back and that you're feeling better and that you're well enough to do the show. Yeah. Yes, we missed you. Well, I was well, I wasn't here for the OnePlus 10T. That that's right. Nobody um, was. Right? I don't think we covered it. Did we cover? No, it? we did. I did. A, I did. Yeah. Well, I did a review on oh, right. uh, yeah. August 9th. It was a very memorable review that Ron swiftly yeah. forgot about. Clearly, <laughs> listen, uh, man. I've heard you do so, so many, many phone reviews. reviews over the past eleven years. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to remember that totally. any of them. So, yeah. That's fair. That's fair. That's well, before we start the show, did you uh, did you mess around with the uh, 10T? What did you think, Flo? <laughs> did you like it? I did. So right now it's actually in my husband's hands. He's going to do my long-term review for me. Oh, nice. So I'm always curious like what he thinks about them because I am busy using... <sighs> well, I might as well just show you. Oh, Uh-oh. Oh, there it is. No, don't do it, Flo. Don't. I know. Oh. I know. I know. Dun, 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 so for our audio know. listeners, if you could tell by my remorse, Flo just held up an iPhone. 
I know. <laughs> Flo, is a, Flo is a resident of the dynamic island now. Yes. Yeah. Okay, the so I will tell island. you. I will you like tell the dynamic you. dynamic island? It's a really nice island. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I will say, I will give them credit. And we talked about this last week as a, as a, as a feature name, Dynamic Island, I think is pretty great. So. It's awesome. Yes. But uh, I, as I wrote in my iPhone 14 pro review, which you can go read at Gizmodo if you're interested, because we're not going to really talk about it here. Uh, I do come from the land of hole punch cameras. And so I expect Apple to figure out how to do it. How I to like cram oh, all that technology please, into a tiny can, little hole. That's what I expect. Can, I come. Can somebody happen. please make? Can somebody please make one of those nerd Lord of the Rings maps? And there's like, <laughs> there's, right? There's, there's, there's Dynamic Island, Dynamic Island, and Land of Hole Punch Camera, and like all like uh -huh. the different regions. The, the right? Notch, yeah. the Notch, yep, Notchville, Notchville, Notchville. Notchville. There, there you go, Notchville. <laughs> Heading on down to Notchville. The Sea of Disparity. Oh. Ca camera Bump Canyon. <laughs> Right, like oh. Cur Curge, oh. Curge yeah. Peak. <laughs> Curge oh, Peak. that's that's a different part of the map where we get into other yeah. features. Oh, sorry, right sorry, now, sorry. we're we're camera living, peninsula. Yeah, we're we're <gasps> residing in the camera peninsula at this moment. What oh, about like uh? Yeah, what about the pop out camera? What would that be called? The uh, pop out paradise. You know, pop oh, out oh, that's paradise. that's better. Yeah, that's yeah. actually. Oh, but. Oh, goodness. That sounds like a depraved place. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's maybe a place you don't want to take the kids. It's uh, not, a, not a great no. place to go. Anyways, oh. I do like the idea of this map, though, even though that last part just suddenly yeah. took a weird turn. But, uh, yeah, so someone out there should make that map and share it with us. And we will do you a favor and show your amazing artwork on the show. We'll, we'll show it off if you yeah, do that. Yeah, so make exactly. it good. Oh my God, I like exactly. the idea of uh, AAA fan art. We need this. Yes. <laughs> we need this so much. It has happened in the past. It's just, it's been a while. So it's we'll just while. lightly encourage that. <laughs> um, well, it is great to have you here. I'm happy you're feeling better. Um, it is all four of us tonight and we got a lot to talk about. Actually, we have a Flow's Hardware Shack coming up a little bit later. So you have that to look forward to. But before we get to any of that, we got to talk about the news, Berg, because we got some to talk about. That's what we do here. Really? Sometimes. Well, <laughs> the EU is definitely mad at Google. <laughs> mad at Google. Oh, that is what, true. Just, can we just take a moment and just dwell on what the Android news bumper has become? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> no, it's, just, it's just Berg literally reading the headline. It's just like... It's a, <laughs> uh, and then us making fun of it. So what a legacy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the EU is indeed uh, laying down its wrath upon big tech. And actually, this bit of news, which we have linked to uh, Ron Amadio, who wrote about this for Ars Technica, this actually started back in 2018. If you remember back in 2018, Google uh, was dealt a pretty big blow by the EU, the EU, and to the tune of a lot of money. We're talking 4.34 billion euros in this antitrust fine. It was related to violations that the EU uh, saw and how Google imposed uh, restrictions on device manufacturers, on network operators. And ultimately, you know, as is the case with antitrust charges like this, all in an effort in the EU's estimation to solidify its own dominant position in this case in the search market. And so recalling like what that was all about, and I'm curious to kind of like revisit this and see like have things changed. The, some of those violations included requiring device makers to pre-install Google search and Chrome in order to install the Play Store. That was one of the things that they didn't like. Requiring device makers to only release devices approved by Google and tying revenue share with device makers only if they have no competing search services on their other devices. And I know we've talked about these things plenty of times over the years. Well, a year ago, so this happened four years ago, right? A year ago, Google appealed the fine. They said even then, this is probably going to take about a year to figure out, you know, uh, to, to come back and, and get the resolution on this. Now we are one year later. The EU general court has confirmed the original decision. So this ultimately means that Google's on the hook uh, for nearly the full amount. Apparently it was slightly adjusted downward to to only 4.125 billion <laughs> euros. So <laughs> discount. Um, it is possible. And I mean, 
the article said it's possible, but I feel like it's kind of likely that if there is an opportunity to appeal, Google's going to do it. And apparently Google has that opportunity to appeal to the block's top court. And if that happens, they only have a couple of months to file that petition. Then I don't know how long it extends, but this is just one of those cases that literally it's years, you know, it's probably going to be mm -hmm. like 10 years. It's like the sun uh, Sun case that l took like a decade to find resolution. Oh, that's I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but now I remember. Yeah, yeah. So that seems well, to be where we're at. Google still has a 96.6% market share on mobile devices in Europe. That dropped only 0.3% since 2018 when all of this began. So nothing there has changed. But um, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? You know, those violations, like... Are, are, I'm trying to think if, if these things have totally been removed. I guess they would have to be for Google to come into compliance with what the EU is requiring. But uh, is this fair? What do you think? Well, well, I'll, 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 I'll first say that uh, I don't blame them for appealing and then now appealing again. Like that, that's yeah. they have to. Yeah. Right? Like right. If, there, if there's any sort of if there's any sort of legal path towards getting out of paying four billion dollars, of course, you try to take it. Right. Yeah. I, I don't think that this is necessarily um, this is like this isn't Google like doing something criminally negligent and having to pay punitive damages or something like that or whatever. This is the EU decide making a decision on how the representative population of their folks want want to be like is levying a, a tax or whatever it is on them. So of course you got you're gonna you're gonna try to get out of it. So I don't mm -hmm. I don't fault them for doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, it'd be surprising if they didn't, which is kind of what I right. thought was interesting. I, I don't think it was Ron's article. I think it was another article that I read, read that said eh, they could possibly do that. I'm like, heck, yeah, they're going to do that. If there's any sort yeah. of wiggle room, you better believe it. That's I mean, even, you know, Google obviously sleeps in, in a bed of billions upon billions of, of euros uh, every single night. But four point one billion is no chump change either. So I have to imagine they push back on that. Yeah, but they have enough cash reserves to keep hitting the snooze button on this. To yeah, kind of see you're right. They can tire mm -hmm. people out. Mm -hmm. um, and also they don't want to crumble on making the point that they can bundle search. I, mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel about the bundling of search, but certainly some of those practices are predatory is a little strong, but just not very conducive to competitiveness and what I like Android yep. for. So mm -hmm. I get it. Uh, but yeah, they, they have enough cash to wait this out probably eventually unless something more drastic happens, I think. Uh, and why would I mean, again, like you, you all said, why, why wouldn't they? Yeah. I mean, the, the irony of this is that it, it is, oh, I don't know. Imagine if they forced all your users to use the same messaging platform. Mm. That, had -in. <laughs> that was on, that was on, on, play, that. didn't play nice with other phones. Right. Like, Ooh, it, you know, throwing it bombs right now. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, it, it, to play devil's advocate yeah. from the EU point of side, point of view or whatever. Like, like when is right? It doesn't. It doesn't promote uh, competitiveness, but like that's also the marketplace we're in now. That's the capitalistic environment that we're in. Is that competition isn't really the name of the game anymore? It's market dominance. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I had wondered if any of this stuff would trickle down into other areas. You know, does Google only do this where it's forced to do it? And like Ron uh, Amadio posted screenshots of the choose your own search engine kind of thing that you get in an Android phone if you're in the EU as a result of all this. And we haven't seen this. Would like would this be a good thing for for us to have that uh, that screen, that option yes. uh, appear by default on phones here in yes. the US and elsewhere? Why, Flo? That would be perfectly fine. Yeah. It'd be perfectly fine. I see absolutely no issue with that. I see no issue with Google complying in these, you know, the, it's a user friendly way. If I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken, I think iOS onboarded you like that too. I think with Safari mm -hmm. in the beginning, yep. like it would ask you to choose a search engine. So I don't see why you can't just do that for Android when you're setting it up. And anyway, you have to go through all that, all those different screens to set up a phone anyway. So, yeah, so, yeah. I, so I choose, your, yeah, choose, one, your, choose your search yeah. engine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. you can totally Unless, understand why Google can, wouldn't want to do that, right? <laughs> right. But, yeah. I, I know why they wouldn't want to do that, but I would love to be able to set up DuckDuckGo from the beginning without yeah. having to go in and change the default after right. you set everything up. Which is not to say that it is impossible to do any of that. Like, we can totally do mm -hmm. that on Android. It's just, does Google make it obvious or make it easy or an option, you know, as opposed to, you know, I think a lot of people aren't, 
aren't power users. I don't even think you need mm -hmm. to be a power user to set a different default search engine, but you do need to be a user deeper than I think a lot of people are when they get a smartphone. Mm -hmm. They're just like, I don't know, that's the browser. I use that browser. I use that search engine, whatever it is. And so, you know, making that offer uh, as, a, as a choice by default, um, yeah, would, would go a long way for people to realize they actually do have the ability to do this. They might not have realized the power was there. Well, I, I might I, even I agree teach that other, sorry. Oh no. Go, go win, then flow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go. So polite. We're so polite. Uh, it kind of reminds me, it's interesting though, because I think to your point, Jason, that for people that aren't uh, not kind of like more, that are slightly more conscientious, I wonder even how, like what would the stats be? If you presented them a list, how many people would make an alternate choice? And even yeah. something as simple as order, like if Google shows up first and it's already selected, I, I would I would hazard a guess that most people would just click next if they don't understand what the screen is. It's kind of like that whole thing about how um, I think I, I had a government professor who used to do campaigns and he would always take his candidates to change their last name to A, something in the top of the alphabet, because generally when people don't quite understand or don't have a lot of yeah. like, I guess, um, uh, kind of prior, <laughs> excuse me, like prior, you know, uh, preference in a choice, they'll usually just pick the first thing. So mm -hmm. I almost wonder if there's also something to be here about having Google not be the first thing in the list and check by default I, because- Yes, I do actually think that that was part of this. I, I have a, a recollection, a memory of this being kind of part of the consideration is that that list has to be kind of like randomly sorted. There was also pushback as far as like what what browsers actually appear there. Like you can kind of see left and right, they're not the same. Some some of them are, are similar. Well, actually, no, sorry. One is search and, and one is browser. But there are different, uh, definitely different order. So sorry, I was getting confused by what I was looking at. But um, for that very reason, because if Google always came up at the top and it was always selected, that still gives Google... Yeah, and they're they're making the decision, you know, they're they're presenting this in the onboarding process that still in the EU's estimation, puts Google in a position to benefit more from than any of the other search engines. And I think DuckDuckGo was one of them that really pushed back on that. So, I will say this, um, unrelated to choosing your search engine, uh, but I was listening to the baseball game this weekend and there was a radio ad for DuckDuckGo. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. DuckDuckGo with a little marketing a budget, apparently. Uh, right yeah, yeah, it's fascinating. It's a good so. search engine. Yeah, it is a good search engine. So, so there you go. 4.1 billion euro. No big deal. Uh, we'll see if they uh, they appeal. And if they do, we'll uh, we'll talk about it. <laughs> All right, Wayne, you got the next one. All right. So we mentioned Area 120 a couple of weeks ago when uh, J.R. Rayfield talked about Stack, which is an app that came from the Area 120 division of Google. Oh, so right. if you weren't aware, Google has a 20% rule where... They basically encourage employees, in addition to their regular work, spend 20% of their time working on a side project, basically, that would benefit Google. So Area 21 is actually a division of Google where they get to work in their 20% projects 100% of the time. So it's like an incubator for experimental work. And so things like Stack came out of that. And I think more recently and more kind of relevant especially this story, is something like Allowed, which is a service for content creators to easily and fairly, so easily and fairly cheaply generate dubs in different langu languages. You just give them a video and a subtitle and then Allowed will just generate using machine learning and machine translation to uh, give you alternate languages and all you want. So, th so in, that- uh, In audio it. form? Like it does- In like audio an automatic... form, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. that's cool. It, it has dubs, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, absolutely. So, so that was an Area 120, 120 project. Now, if that sounded cool, I've got a little bit of bad, like, sort of bad news for you. <laughs> uh, is that I need to tell you that Google is actually cutting back Area 120 by half, both in terms of personnel and also projects, and that they're going to be focusing on, focusing on AI first initiatives like Allowed because it, it does use a lot of you know uh, machine translation and speech work that Google has been working on. And unsurprisingly, this is kind of you know with a lot of companies doing kind of slowdowns on hiring and Sundar uh, um, Pinchai himself saying, oh, at the time, oh, sorry, uh, Google's himself saying we, they need to think about how they can, quote, minimize distraction and really raise uh, the bar on product excellence and productivity. So it it, it, it makes sense. Um, I know I, as a dev, I'm just super jealous of the 20% rule period. And now mm -hmm. I'm feeling super bad for the folks that basically had to find a new uh, space within Google. So. 
I don't know. What do you all think? Is it a wrong move? Are you sad? Is it just a sign of the times? Does it make sense to pivot to more AI first projects? Yeah, I mean, yes. I mean, if Google has to focus, obviously, there's a lot of of gold to be mined with AI. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just it just is so so now and so a integral part of how Google does its business behind the scenes. So obviously if they need to focus, it makes sense that they would focus on that. I think the bigger, kind of the bigger picture and the thing that I'm, that kind of bums me out about this is that Google has for so long been very, um, very welcoming to experimentation and, you know, as a, as a company culture, been very open to this. And yes, I realize the economy is, is kind of, is pretty wonky right now. And Sundar Pichai has said, you know, they're, they're kind of, uh, cutting down in certain areas that are non-essential and everything. And I guess I can see why this would be non-essential, but I hope this doesn't signal a wider kind of, uh, veering away from experimentation because that's that's a part of the the company uh the signature of of google that i've always really appreciated that they are willing to play with it even though some of those things end up you know ticking people off because you know it gets they end up getting an app on their phone and then it doesn't work quite the way they expect it to and that's because google treats it like a beta and blah blah, blah. there's a, a whole host of downsides to that i suppose but i but i also appreciate that google has uh, value that so highly. And I hope this doesn't signal that they're moving away from that on a, on a wider scale. So agreed. I subscribe to that. I mean, that's, that, that's, yeah, that's the, you just hope you, you want areas of innovation, but the thing is, is that there'll be another thing in like three years, Jason, or two years, you know what I mean? Like how many, like we, the Microsoft garage, like we see, yeah, the, we see yeah. this, we see this thing crop up. And so this is just the cyclical nature of these companies, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. but, and what and exactly what is, does AI mean? <laughs> it, it, like it, me, it, it means it's everything. It's a large word. It, you know, <laughs> yeah, it, totally. it spans so many genres. And like, if I think about AI and things that Google is still investing in, I think about that technology that they're using for that um, work pod that they came up with um, that supposedly is used on their campus or whatever. Like that's the kind of stuff I think of when I hear of Google sticking with things that are AI because autonomous work pod. Is it something like that? No, no, it's, that's not Google. Gosh, I forgot what it was. It was the one where like the video makes it feel like you're there in person. Oh, 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 with. oh, oh, a star. Is that starlight? Uh, starlight. Or like that? Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Got Listen, it. I can't keep track of every project. Okay. Of this course not. <laughs> of course not. No project starlight. Is it, it is starlight, right? Yeah, it's Starlight. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the okay. the virtual mm -hmm. yeah. meeting yeah. thing. Yeah, no, that's awesome technology. Starline, that's what Starline. it is. Ooh, not yeah. Starlight, not yes. Starlight. It's St Project yes. Starline. And, yes. and now I have St Starman stuck in my head. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're yeah. welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I will say that the twenty percent thing, just in general, is um. I know that they're kind of cutting this in half, but the 20% the rule thing is not common. And I think that it's, I think there is still a, it seems to be there's still a spirit of innovation, experimentation, and a lot of stuff that I've loved as a dev has come from just devs messing around. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense. I, I think increasingly the conversation is how can AI like automate, expediate things, uh, maybe even my job mm -hmm. one day or our job, or, 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 hopefully not our jobs, but my job <laughs> one day for sure. So, I Heck, if they're sense. if they're dubbing videos, there's there's a time where we won't need to do any podcasting anymore. That we'll just podcast just for us. It'll dub our dub our voices. AI some jokes and, yeah. and things like that. So. <laughs> do, yeah, set the I, set the it. joke um, quota to you know fifteen percent. So fifteen percent of the things that come out of Jason's mouth can be humorous. Uh, and can, then can I get? <laughs> I would love to give my job the the Android news part to AI. I mean, <laughs> I would love that too. I'm curious to see what AI came up. With for the news bumper, that could be like <laughs> the next. Phase. It couldn't do any worse, right? <laughs> can yeah, somebody can figure said, out can after who? Level? 
after whoever else figures out the map of all the different regions that mm -hmm. we live in, um, uh, th there's an AI district, by the way, on that map. Uh, then the next mm -hmm. project is someone needs to make an AI uh, Android news bumper voice. And what we can do almost... is we can feed it our rundown. <laughs> like, what is the yeah. rundown at like 4:55 right before we do mm -hmm. the show? I yep. run the rundown through it, and it analyzes yep. all the stories. Oh, that'd be and awesome. It comes great. up with and it'll something. Tell you. I'll read it no matter how stupid it is. <laughs> and it'll be there in that. Go. It'll be. It'll be in that um, computer. Uh, the, the, I'm really dating myself and maybe Burke and maybe Jason might be the only ones who remember, but do you remember Eliza? Oh yeah. I in, that, in that, like in that, that robot voice, voice <laughs> yeah, that robot what? voice, Eliza, uh, telling, you know, giving you responses back in your psychotherapy. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> um, Someday. Uh, yes. Someday. And then at least yeah. we can blame the AI and not you Burke. Cause we don't want to blame you. Okay. I can, I can blame Burr. I, I, mean, I can blame Burr. Ron wants yeah, to blame He's still, <laughs> no, no question. <laughs> so, all right. Well, um, moving on. Um, so we are mere weeks away from the Pixel event um, that I feel like we've already talked talked to death uh, a little bit. But um, it wouldn't be a lead up to an event without more leaks. Right? I know. Yeah. It's we love our leaks. Um, avalanche. So the the, tens the Tensor G2 chip from the Pixel 7 Pro uh, has been sourced from a new Geekbench listing. Um, CPU cores from the first gen will be very similar in the G2, and it's possible that this will reduce heat and increase power efficiency. All right. Uh, it will have a new GPU that looks to bring 20% performance and power efficiency improvements and 35% better. There you go. Machine learning use. Mm -hmm. Everything's AI. Mm -hmm. Everything's coming up AI. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, um, uh, this doesn't mean a major milestone update, but perhaps an important and needed improvement over gen one, um, where, you know, speculation that the pixel seven will likely arrive on October 18th, uh, the event, the event, uh, for those of you, if you've forgotten, if you don't have your calendar in front of you is October 6th. Um, and multiple leakers are confirming that date. And that aligns with what we've seen before is that they announced the phone, then they announced it on sale date, usually a couple weeks after. Um, the Pixel Watch yeah. might not arrive, might arrive on November 4th, according to those leaks, so a little after the phone. Um, and then speaking of the Pixel Watch, there's another leak that sees the Pixel Watch price point hitting about $349.99 um, with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi only. Um, and that makes sense since the cellular model was already leaked to be $399 at launch. And finally, 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 a Nest device that's likely to make an appearance uh, uh, is an updated Nest Wi-Fi Pro. Uh, it will include Wi-Fi 6E support. Uh, and thanks to our good friends at B&H's pr uh, premature product page, uh, pricing looks to be $199 for a single router, $299 for a double pack, and $399 for a triple pack. Um, you gotta love it when those retail those retailers are getting re are getting ready and they their their product pages accidentally go go live. But um, so yeah, so now we're getting to very, very specific, like actual, like probably real leaks ahead of the, which just takes away all the fun. But yeah, yes, maybe. Yeah, so. it, it always seems to. Yeah, so the event on the sixth, and then usually, you know, it's it's like the event on the sixth, and then a week later, the like all the reviews suddenly release at in one fail swoop, and then like a week later, the the device is available. That seems to often be the cadence that happens around around the these events uh, that are coming up. Flo, I'm curious to ask you a question. The Pixel yes. Watch price point. Uh, rumored to be three hundred forty nine dollars ninety nine cents for Bluetooth and Wi Fi only, so right around four hundred dollars for the cellular model. In the realm of wearables, Google is a new entry into this space. Can't do you do you have faith that they can justify a price that high? I, I feel like that's maybe a little high for their first entry, but. But I also realize Google Google really does want to be seen in the upper echelon with everyone else, even if they don't have the history to back it up. What do you think? So I probably would have said something a little different before I tried on the Apple Watch, to be mm -hmm. quite honest. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know how I feel about that price point because the Samsung Watch, the Galaxy Watch 5 is $300. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a phenomenal device. So I'm trying, I'm struggling to understand how this Pixel is watch is going to fit in to the lineup, as it were. Um, because from the leaks and the things that people have been supposedly saying about it, it doesn't sound like the ultimate competitor, especially with the way that Wear OS is right now. 
Yeah. I'm super curious. So I to see really how need it- Google to knock it out of the park because the software experience that I have with Samsung is uh, it's it's something it's better than what we had before, but I can tell that this is like Samsung's flavor and mm. not what Google is really meaning for Wear OS. Mm-hmm. And so I need to I need to see this whole picture, but I just cannot imagine three hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Three three hundred fifty seems it, uh, a little high. Are the me. leaks saying that it has a temperature sensor? Oh, uh, I'm not sure about the temperature sensor. I don't know that I've seen any information as far as that's okay. concerned. So that stuff starts to worry me because, again, the Apple Watch's whole thing is it does all this health centric stuff. And yeah. that's kind of something, yes, the Galaxy Watch 5 has a temperature sensor on it right now, but it's a little different than the one on the Apple Watch and it's not currently uh, active. So you're not getting any data or any help from it at all. And so like when you start to see this picture, you just kind of wonder like what what are they doing? How can they justify or how will they justify? Um, I'm looking at, uh, you know, and I'm sorry, I don't have the link, but it's from April, a nine to five Google uh, report that basically showed at that time that the Pixel Watch would have have basically the same health sensors as the Fitbit Charge 5, which does have a temperature sensor. Okay. uh, For overnight skin tracking. Okay. So that's important, but it's also the software. It's just this. There's this really big picture. Mm, yeah, that needs to come together. Well, yeah, um, and actually, that's now that I think about it, that's maybe the comparison that uh, that Google can, you know, maybe lean into to glean a little bit more value per, uh, perception from from people is the fact that they do own Fitbit. That Fitbit has a really great reputation and how and and we know that there's going to be Fitbit functionality integrated with the Pixel Watch. So, you know, maybe that's how Google presents the value play. They say, well, this isn't just a, another Wear OS device. This is a Wear OS device with everything you love from a Fitbit watch or whatever however they choose to to do that. Maybe that justifies it a little bit. I don't know. I want the Pixel 7 and Pixel Watch or you know, Pixel 7 Pro and the Pixel Watch to be same experience as what you get with an iPhone Pro and the Apple Watch. Like we desperately need that because if you have a Samsung device and a Samsung watch, it's a whole different experience now Mm -hmm. with this new, especially like with the foldables um, from what I remember, (laughs) because my head has been like zooming between, between different uh different specs yeah by the way can i make a comment on those benchmarks sure so i have to say just like in my own testing the pixel 6 the tensor chip that's inside that one it benchmarks awfully compared Mm. to uh the iphone compared to snapdragon phones Mm -hmm. qualcomm snapdragon phones it does not at all like match up and it's very weird and I'm starting to feel like the synthetic benchmarks that exist maybe aren't working with the system that is the tensor chip. This is a theory that I have. That the that the benchmarks aren't aren't understanding kind of the, the benefits <laughs> is, of the tensor chip. This is, is a that- completely left field uh, theory that I have not based on any like science whatsoever, but I'm just, this is what I'm feeling because the numbers are just so, they were so, so low on the pixel six hmm. and the pixel six pro with 12 gigs of Ram mm-hmm. compared to all the other phones I tested this year. And it's just like something is off to me. So then, so then my question there is, yeah. Um, because you're obviously like identifying like that, that isn't right. Are you saying that like your experience with them has not been comparable to the low kind of scores yes. that they're getting that they should, that you mm-hmm. really believe that it should be higher because mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like it, it's a phone yeah. of, you know, that scores so lowly. Or, or maybe it is that these chips are just really tuned for the AI that the pixel does. Yeah, I think you're right. And that's why, who cares about what it says on paper at the end of the day, because it's, this chip is specially tuned for these devices. Yeah. Um, But I, it's weird to me that there's such a disparity in numbers, but the feeling of using a pixel six 
is not that of a, a phone that is testing at that level. Yeah. Well, and then there are a lot of people you know, that have been on this show time and time again that are like specs or uh, uh, benchmarks don't matter. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like benchmarks are the thing that it's easy to point at a benchmark and look at the score and be like, ah, that score is better than that one. That must be a better phone. But but we know time and time again, that doesn't necessarily paint the picture. Like that's one data point in a much larger kind of uh, image, you know, uh, to pull from. So uh, I think you're right. I think the Tensor is not necessarily a chip that's meant to go toe to toe with the top of the line Snapdragon or even, you know, the i whatever uh, with iPhone or with Apple's uh, on Apple's side. A16 by There we go. Thank you. <laughs> I just throw out letters. It's, it's I'm cool. Sorry, I'm, I'm fresh just like, off whatever. The review. Here's a letter. So. Is that the. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, just says how clueless I am about Apple products, but um, I don't. I don't believe whether and maybe maybe this is uh, Google doing a poor job of of marketing or signaling what the Tensor chip is capable of. But I feel that anybody that looks at the Tensor chip and says this is supposed to be a top tier, you know, goes against the the top of the line Snapdragon chip. I just I don't think they're playing the same game. Which is not to say that the Tensor chip is a bad chip or a better chip or anything. It's just Google knows what it's really good at and what its phones need to do. And largely Yes, that is artificial intelligence. That is machine learning on device. That requires a certain type of chip to be in that system in order to do that. And Google has, you know, basically created a chip to do just that. Is it the best all around chip? No, it's probably not. And it's probably going to score lower on benchmarks as a result. But it does what Google's strength is really well. And that's why when you use the Pixel, it feels like a really great experience for for most people or for a lot of people. I don't even know if it's most people, but it does for me. So I feel like we just answered our question from earlier about yeah. why Google is putting all of the emphasis. Yeah, you're right. I think we did. did. You sure did. I was waiting for you to notice that, by yeah. the way. Yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just because uh, that's, that's the upside. And just to remind everybody, remember that when you buy a Pixel device, you're unlocking new abilities in Google Photos. You're unlocking yeah. new abilities within the Google Assistant. Google's going to push out stuff to you first with the Pixel because it's able to, like, it understands where all the connections are made in its hardware because of that. And so that's why these things are coming out a lot faster. So it's an interesting, like, yeah, we're, we're yeah. coming into a really interesting dynamic here. Indeed. Yep, mm -hmm. for sure. We'll talk about interesting. Let's take a break and thank our first sponsor of the evening because this episode of All About Android is brought to you by Wealthfront. Uh, and Wealthfront is a financial services company that was founded in 2008 with the goal to make building long-term wealth delightfully easy. If you've seen the market lately, you probably didn't like what you saw, but seeing is a matter of perspective. Wealthfront is an investing app with a different vision, one focused on long-term wealth, designed to weather any market conditions, even the one we're in now. With Wealthfront, you'll get a pre-built, diversified portfolio that spreads your investing eggs across more baskets. It's the time-tested way to build long-term wealth and weather whatever volatility is happening in the market. The trick to wealth isn't timing, it's time, because historically, the market has always rebounded. By automating your investments, it's easier to invest regularly regardless of the ups and downs of volatility. So if you want to invest for the long term while the market is basically having a clearance sale, do not wait. The time is now. Wealthfront makes it super easy to start investing. Answer a few questions about your risk level and future plans, and you'll get a personalized portfolio built for the long term. That's really it. And you'll get a $50 bonus if you sign up today. Wealthfront was voted the best overall robo-advisor by Investopedia and is already helping nearly half a million people build their wealth with over $27 billion in managed assets. Get a bonus $50 when you start investing with Wealthfront. So sign up today. Just visit Wealthfront.com slash twit. That's Wealthfront.com slash twit. This bit of investing wisdom is a paid endorsement from Wealthfront. Thanks, Wealthfront, for being pretty cool and helping us earn wealth. All right. All right. Thank you, Wealthfront. And now it's not just a hardware section. It's Flo's Hardware Shack. <laughs> oh, but you don't need an extra. Uh, oh, we do have an extra uh, thing for that, don't we? Ah, uh, there we go. That's right. Uh -huh. I, I almost forgot. Oh, and look at that old, outdated, foldable phone on the, <laughs> on the desk. 
<laughs> oh, boy. It really is. A, that really is a great bumper. Anyways, uh, so Flo, you have been busy. As you said, you've, you've been busy with, uh, with Apple's latest devices, of course. Mm -hmm. But stepping back in history a little bit, you were also spending a lot of time with Samsung's foldables. I have the foldables here in the studio. I have not spent nearly as much time with them as I had hoped, but you have. And so uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of like your experience uh, with these foldables, how you think Samsung's doing right now? I would love to. So first of all, here is my Z Fold 4. Oh, it looks so as stylish. As you can see, I have a cute Kate Spade case on it. Um, Ooh. They, they sent Very me nice. this case to try out and I wanted to see what it would be like to use the Fold 4 with a case because I didn't get to do that during the review process. And um, it's a little... Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. not good it changes the experience a little bit yeah what what changes um, about it so much so what changed about it is i actually like made notes here as i'm like referring to them is um oh your your finger kind of like drops in oh i see yeah because the 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 lip on the outside to keep the screen mm -hmm. protected but that kind of yeah. interferes with uh kind of the the fall off of the display on the mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, so here's kind of like what my usage has been like, I'm still using the Z fold Four every single day. I've been, um, go, I've been traveling with this. It is a really fantastic device. I think the reason I love it the most is because it is basically a folding tablet. I uh, would rather just type everything with this thing open. Um, and actually when I use it and when I tested it, I tested it mostly as a tablet device because that's where its strength is. It is a, it is a portable tablet device to the point that using it when it's closed might feel a little awkward because this is a slightly more narrow, uh, phone than what you're used to in the Android world. It's not like nice and wide the way that the Samsung uh, Galaxy S22 or the Pixel 6s. It's like this slightly thinner brick. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it does feel kind of like a brick because when you fold it up closed, it it gets dense. Yeah, <laughs> so super whereas dense. it feels really light and thin when it's splayed out as a tablet, if you fold it back up, it feels like this dense little phone that um, is going to weigh down your pocket a little bit. Especially if you have one of those like flowy pockets, you know, <laughs> like in a pair of linen pants. By the way, mm -hmm. really hard to carry this in a pair of linen pants. And we had some mm -hmm. hot weeks here. Uh, yeah. And it, it like, it just like moves around. It's very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know exactly what Flo is talking about. Cause I wore, I wore like um, some like uh, studio joggers from uh, uh, like an athletic brand. And like the phone was like banging against my knee cause it was like pulling my pocket down. So uh, I yeah. absolutely I mean, feel this. Total, I can, I can totally understand like uh, this, this thing is heavy and when it's folded up, I mean, not only is it heavy, but it's, it's heavy. It's concentrated heavy. You know what I mean? At least here, like when it's folded out, it like tricks your mind into thinking it's not heavy because it's spread across two hands. <laughs> but when it's just this, I mean, you called it a brick and that's really the word that comes to mind for me too. Can you, you can look through it. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. So for our I audio do, viewers, Flo, like Flo, is holding, just, like, you're right. Flo is holding the phone in the folded mode on the small side up to her eye like a telescope oh, no. <laughs> or like a view master. It doesn't close all the way. It has a little oh, space in the middle. Yeah, I can see. I, well, I can't really see clearly, but I can definitely see through it. Oh, that's yeah. weird. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Mm -hmm. See? The, that's how it keeps the display from totally uh, creasing in on creasing. itself. Yeah. Crease. Oh, yep. so the Z Fold 4, the strength that it really has is that the software is totally optimized for this form factor. And that's why I enjoy using it like splayed open. I, and I mean, I do every so right now, the life that I'm living. I have my primary phone, which is my primary phone number, and that kind of sits dormant. Uh, it just goes with me everywhere. And then during the day I use right now, I'm using the iPhone um, because I'm just kind of like still collecting data about it. And then at night I get into bed with my like face mask and I take out the Z Fold 4 and it's just me and my girl, the Z Fold 4. <laughs> and we're reading the newspaper and we're on TikTok 
and we're on Instagram and we're just like reading and catching up on the day's news that I didn't get to read during work. And so I've built this like really nice ritual around the Z Fold 4 to the point that I don't want to give it up. <laughs> and eventually I'm going to have to give back nice. the phone. Yeah. Um, but I also don't want to spend $1,300 on the base model mm. of this device. I mean, it's an, it's a pricey device. You it's really, a really pricey want this life device. change. Yeah. Because you're going to change the way that you use your phone. Like, this is not a phone that I can like, hey, what's up? I mean, you can do this, but eventually your arm is going to get tired. It's the phone that you have to really rely on having the buds and the watch with it. Because right. um, what this will become is like, you know, a pocket computer. That's what it essentially is. It's a pocket computer and you need peripherals for it. It's, a watch it's and more a pocket computer than most smartphones. And we can already mm -hmm. consider our smartphones a pocket computer. And this thing yep. kind of takes that to the next level. Along those lines, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. If you take my, uh, my overhead, it has the uh, kind of bottom of the display kind of launch uh, launch bar it. or whatever. How have, how have you liked that? That's new with this love phone, it. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's new. And I, I love it. So what it does is it will, um, let's see. So I'm going to unlock it. We've got my bots maroon background. I still haven't changed. I paid a dollar for this. By the way. <laughs> it's the best. It is I'm not changing it. Um, okay. So what we'll do is, um, <laughs> uh, hold on. I, I opened, uh, I opened the newspaper app, so let's just not but read yeah, the headlines. But, we but can then see. at the bottom, yep. there's this little dock. And what it does is that it'll put your last, you can't see this on my screen, but it'll put your last two apps um, over next to the navigation area. And I don't use gestures. I'm using the Android navigation as God intended. Uh, so um, the apps will populate next to that. And then you have like, I have my dock of six apps that I always have pinned down there. And um, I've developed again, a routine around it. Uh, some apps that are previously phone only actually work really well on this. So I'm playing games with the phone open. Um, I, I just really love having a tablet back. You know, I haven't really had this lifestyle with a phone or a device like this since the Nexus 7. I'm, so. I'm telling you, this is this is less about, uh, although I guess I could say it's about the foldable, but I think it's more about how the world needs good tablets, right? And yeah, Google, and now Google I, understands Android is more that. optimized for it. Yeah. So, yeah. like, I'm more open to it. But I have to say, guys, the battery yep, life on this thing, um, hmm, I'm great. a little, Yeah. Because if when you're using that big screen, I mean, that's just like sucking up all the battery and you're going to be using it. That's why you're spending all this money on this device. You're not going to stay on that small screen all day. I don't think. Oh, that tiny little screen on the front. It's just so mm -hmm. cute. And yeah, narrow. that tiny little super AMOLED, you know, I mean, it, 120 hertz refresh rate. Like it's that it's thing beautiful. Is, I mean, it's a, it's yeah, a pretty it screen. It's just, it's just very narrow. And even... It, even if this was just the phone, you'd maybe get used to it. But when you know you've got this hanging out on the inside, it's really hard to use this tiny little narrow screen on the front. It but, is. But it I'm is. really happy. Even, like, that's not to say that they haven't totally made strides um, on this front screen. Because if you remember the first year that they did this, it was it was laughable how unusable it really was because it was so incredibly narrow. Now it's actually nearer to a real phone, right? Like I have it up next to the Z Flip, which is really more like a, a, a true candy bar phone, you know, except that it also flips. But um, so, you know, they're getting there. And I don't know that they need to go much further than this because you're, you're not getting this for the front display. You're getting it for the inside. Should we talk about the Z Flip yeah, next? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So um, as I mentioned, I... I got the stupid virus, which is why I don't have a uh, full review. So what I'm going to actually do with this phone is I'm going to do a check-in with it after we get through this maelstrom of whatever's going on in in our uh, in our lives with smartphones. Um, basically, as soon as I'm done, hopefully as soon as I'm done with the iPhone, I will be able to revisit this. But um, so far, very comparable experience to last year's Flip 3. Yeah, I would say uh, the camera is slightly more improved, but it's still that very like saturated tinge that you get from a Samsung device. And so kind of like keep that in mind. Um, but I do I will say that it is easier to do like fun, 
you know, selfie stand-ups or whatever with the flip than it is with the fold. The fold is a little harder to kind of like get for that kind of like content creation. <laughs> Good job, Jason. Yeah, which, Again, which for our, is, audio, <laughs> our audio viewers, Jason is scrolling through a series of selfies he took himself on the flip uh, that are <laughs> equal part adorable and uh, <laughs> all the way up to, all, all the way up to hor horrifying. Yeah, where, exactly. Where did my chin go? I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, yeah. Um, this base that's on this bottom, on the bottom of this uh, flip four is, I haven't scratched it yet. Um, I like the fact that this has a built-in tripod situation. I took this phone to the beach and what I did is I, yep, I propped it up like that on the sand and I took video of me and my family playing together, which I was able to kind of like set up and do all that without any additional hardware. And so I like that about the flip is that it has that little mode built in. And so I can see why this would be like a phone for everybody. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that again, like the fold, it's a little weird when you fold it up. And if you use pockets, because just like the fold, it kind of like swishes around in the pocket. Um, it's, it's a little, a little too bulky, small, you know, right? Yeah. I, yeah. You know, like, I don't, I don't know. I feel, I do feel differently about this in, in my pockets and you know, my normal, like, like my, dude jeans pockets so i realize you know different <laughs> pockets everybody has different you know different pockets that they're wearing um but i feel like over the years i've gotten really used to the candy bar size phone in my pocket and so yep. being able to fold this up to half the size sure it's a little bit thicker but but it's different it's it's not this huge nor like the the normal size that i'm used to putting in my pocket times two it's it's thicker, but it's half the size, and it, I feel like it's a nice trade-off. So, ha in my experience, pocketing this is is better. Um, but I can totally understand because it is still, you know, it's still a concentrated, heavy puck at this point. Okay. So, but on the on the flip side, so, oh, on the huh. flip side, Wait, on the uh, flip side, <laughs> and the flip side. That's I didn't yeah, even. That my mind. <laughs> Go ahead, embrace it. Um, <laughs> quick side story: I bought myself a very cute little like crossbody from this brand called Donut. If just if you want to like go see what I'm talking about. And I didn't realize how small the bag actually was. And it's to the point where when I try and fit the one plus nine in there, it's like there, I'm barely able to zip over it. And so I was just thinking about how nice it is to finally have a phone that fits into like any freaking purse. Mm. Because the bigger they've been making these phones, the harder it's been yeah. to like close a clutch on it or, you know, put it into the little pockets that are meant, you know, for a phone in the bag. And so, um, I'm actually thinking, depending on how my review goes of the flip, I'm actually thinking about possibly getting this as my like, because I need to have a dormant phone now because I'm just constantly switching between phones, but I can't have my main number in one. And I like this because it's just so, and by the way, the battery life on this is really good. I'll just like leave it, I'll leave it on a stand here for a couple of days and it'll still have like 20, 30% left on it when I pick it up. It's it's a good, it's a good little folding phone. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I like it. It's just um, not as powerful as the fold for. I still, you know, I, I, I can't help but remember the flips of flip phones of the days of yore. And I really want it to like have that satisfying like kind of, thing. Yeah. And it's, it's very tight, which it, is actually probably a really great thing for things like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh. So you haven't been using it. That's why. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, that's it true. It does have a break in period. Okay. It does have a break in period. It was very stiff when I first took it out of the box, but now it's just this very like fluid movement. It does that nice, like that nice snap. I'm afraid I'm going to lose it if I do that. <laughs> it's going to be yeah. like, ah. It still has like the cute front side where you can like um, slide over and do stuff and you know, yeah. check your notifications. Uh, it has cute colors. And again, if you have a Samsung watch or the earbuds, you get like a couple of special extra features first. And so it's, I, I, I have seen actually more phones of these, by the way, uh, kind of popping out. About. out. Yeah. In the wild. I've actually yeah, got a I've lot of positive wild. feedback. Uh, when, so like this weekend I was walking around with my fold, started to go back to the fold. And I, 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 was, I was at UPS and I handed the gal at, at the end of the counter you know, my fold open with an address on it because I didn't want to have to reach her. And 
Mm-hmm. She was like, oh, wow, what is this? Like, ask me questions. And then similarly, I, I like I went to Walgreens afterwards and the, and the gal there recognized it. So I, I think Samsung is doing a great job of getting brand awareness and also positivity. The price point is what scared people off. I The second girl was really interested in in like the fold, but she asked me how much it was. And I told her fr- straight up and I was like, she was like, oh, that that's ridiculous. And I was like, yeah, but girl, look for the flip. Like, and I, I did the whole right. feels an Android person. So. Uh, there is a lot of positive, positive, like feedback. And like when someone sees it, they're like, oh, wow, what is that? So, mm-hmm. which is exactly what the, what I, I feel like Samsung designed this well, phone to be, it, right? Like, this mm-hmm. is really the, the appeal to everyone foldable. It's, you know, it's, it's small. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't do so much. I think you, you kind of have to have a reason to have something that folds out that big, but this you get because everybody has a phone that's this big, but what about having a phone that's this big? that can also be that big, you know, <laughs> that's a pretty easy sell as long as the price is right. And I think Samsung's got there pretty, pretty well with this device. Um, real quick before we head out of the shack. Yeah, um, I've got that too. The, yeah, the, the watch five, right? The watch five mm-hmm. pro. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Right here. Right here. Oh, there it is. Uh, same, same business as the watch four that I'm still wearing. By the way, look at my cool. This just came in today. That's this case. so cute, dude. <laughs> um, nice. Yeah, I was going to say, it I, looks I really like a swatch. Like, Burke, Burke agrees. I, I really do like Samsung's watches. Mm-hmm. I And especially because I've been wearing a Samsung watch with uh, an Apple watch. But uh, this watch is not very different from the four, except that it has the temperature sensor. But again, it's not live yet. I don't really understand what Samsung's going to enable with that. And so I'm looking forward to whatever update comes down the pipeline. But the good news is that uh, the bevy of accessories that have been made for this watch, for the Watch 4, are now compatible with the Watch 5. So that means there's more stuff out there to customize. And I, I know that sounds like maybe silly to some folks, but I think that that's what makes these things a lot more fun. Mm-hmm. Hence why I went out and bought a cute pink plastic case for my Watch 4. Which, and this would also fit on the Watch 5, no problem. I am still like working through the Watch 5 as a full review because again, I got really sick. So the last thing that I really need to check on it is battery life. But based on what the reviews have already said, battery life is not, I just don't think any smartwatch right now is giving us what we want out of battery life. If you want an always on display, if you want con- sensors that are constantly taking your measurements, constantly checking your heart rate, um, you know, your blood temperature and all that stuff, uh, you blood temperature, is that the right thing? Yes. Blood oxygen. That's what I meant to say. There we go. Then you have to have a watch that's constantly pinging and that's going to use a battery life. So that's where we are now. Right on. That's so people are. can uh, stay tuned for um, mm-hmm. more of your writing about the Galaxy Watch 5. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right. So all things considered, before we uh, venture out of uh, foldable land, whatever whatever we call this area of the map, uh, I really do think this map needs to happen at this point. It would be really wonderful. Um, I really, you know, you know what I'm talking like. It's like the yeah. like the yeah, it's, it's like, like a cartoony style map. It's like on an angle. Like you know exactly what yeah. I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Totally, yeah. okay. totally. I can see it Someone, in my mind's eye. Someone who watches or listens to this <laughs> must know and make it on how like to do this. foam, like a foam th- sheet where you can kind of fold it up. You, oh, yeah. I was going to say, you want topography on it too? <laughs> so, I think oh, he's, I know, you guys like a, sound like a class project. I feel like people are worried they're going to get graded. <laughs> that'd be, that'd make and, a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're not asking for too much. We're just asking for a topography map that we can like put diorama. on our walls. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, exactly. A diorama would be even better. Um, overall, do you think Samsung's uh, kind of foldable offerings this year, like you know, compared to previous years, good or kind of iterative? Or are you excited about what they've gotten in the works? Definitely yeah. iterative. Yeah. I think the fold is a lot better than it was of the second generation, yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, definitely iterative. Basically we're going in the right direction, but like I said in the headline of my uh, fold review, like it's just a real pity how expensive these are. Cause it's just, it's not in my budget right yeah. now to mm. consider this. Um, my budget right now is seven or 800. Mm-hmm. I cannot go over that. I think I know a phone that might be coming out soon that might be in that price range. Just saying. No. 
And I think it might not have a telephoto lens, though. Oh, that's true. I know. That's I true. Know. It might not. Okay. You might just have to keep Why going. do I have to pay an extra 200 for a telephoto? Because that's how they get you. It's the same on the <laughs> iPhone. Like, I don't Why? Yeah. They okay. got they got to figure out some way to differentiate them and get that extra little bit. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've even said it about the 6. If the Pixel 6 had the telephoto, uh, which is only on the 6 Pro, I think that I would prefer to have the 6 over the 6 Pro. Just from a size standpoint, I don't feel like I need my phone to be the biggest phone in the world anymore. I actually just pulled out my Nexus 6 the other day. I was looking at that and oh, talk about big Nexus phones. Six. That's like oh, a, that's like, I miss that phone. That's not just a big though, phone. That's like, a wide phone. That phone was yeah. a chonker. Anyways, uh, thank you for, for walking through uh, the shack thank with you. us. We appreciate it. Thank you. I'll have more for you <clears throat> next month. Excellent. Although I think you already know what next month is going to be. Yes. All right. And that concludes Flo's Hardware Shack. All right. Coming up, we're going to get into some app news, including, yes, of course, a tip from J.R. Raphael from Android Intelligence. But first, this episode of All About Android is brought to you by ClickUp. So just... Take a moment when you're wandering through the Android map and all the different mystical worlds that we've talked about on this show so far and think if you had one extra day every week to wander through this map, where would you go? If you had one extra day, would you go to foldable uh, paradise or whatever we called it or <laughs> I don't know what we called it anymore but anyways you could pick a place on the map and you could spend all day there because you'd have an extra day uh, I, I would love to do that I would also love to go to uh, the, the place on the map that allows me to use my phone to make music I'd go there and spend a day all right this is all mystical and, and kind of fake and everything like that because you can't actually go to this map but you can find very usable time in your daily schedule to do the things that you actually really want to do uh, it's all possible with ClickUp, the productivity platform that will actually save you one day a week on work, guaranteed. ClickUp began with the premise that productivity was broken. There are too many tools to keep track of, too many things in entirely separate ecosystems. We know all about that. There had to be a more productive way to get through the daily hustle, and ClickUp is the tool to do that. It's the one tool to house all your tasks, your projects, your docs, goals, spreadsheets, and even more. You can join more than 800,000 highly productive teams using uh, ClickUp today, and you'll want to because it's built for you, right? It's also built for teams, one to a, more than 1,000 a, a uh, users using ClickUp. Whatever the size of your team, you're going to be able to use it and, and just maximize everyone's time on the team. It's packed with features. It's packed with customization options that no other productivity tool has. So you can work the way that you work best. So whether you're in project management, if you're in engineering, sales, marketing, or HR, ClickUp has easy to use solutions that create a more efficient work environment. So you're going to want to check out ClickUp and uh, regain some time in your daily schedule and your weekly schedule. Use code Android You'll get 15% off ClickUp's massive unlimited plan for a full year. That means you can start reclaiming your time for under $5 a month. Sign up today at ClickUp.com. Make sure and use code Android when you do that. Hurry. This offer does end soon. That's ClickUp.com. Make sure and use that code Android for 15% off the unlimited plan for, for, uh, for a full year. There you go. We thank ClickUp for their support of all about Android. And now it's time for a little bit of app news and then a tip. Let's jump into it. All right. Ron, it's over to you. Hello. Sorry about that. I got a <laughs> I got a I got a weird error on my phone during the during that, and I was trying to figure out what happened. I'm, get, I'm getting a, a df dash df e r h dash o one error on Google Play Services, so I'm trying to figure out what's oh. going on. Anyway, oh, well, Ron, that's, that's totally it. like a. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Oh damn it. <laughs> anyway, um, well, speaking of that, Google I was passed. convinced for a second. By the way, I thought you I, actually I, knew. I know. So did I. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> so frustrating. Anyway, um, so Google announced today that assistant reminders are going away. What? Uh, this was leaked, and it's actually been expected for a while now, um, so it's a little bit of anticlimactic. But instead, assistant and calendar reminders will move over to Google's Tasks app. Um, so, you know, a single app to manage all reminders, you know, similar to Google Meet slash Google Duo and Google Wallet slash Google Pay. Uh, there the we go. Tasks and reminders. Wow. This will be rolling out in the coming months. And hey, if anything, at least Google is not predictable in terms of these moves. Um, <laughs> Or consistent, I would say, consistent in terms of these moves. But yeah, maybe a little so. predictable at times. But yep. <clears throat> but I don't know that this is, this is necessarily a bad thing because I feel like reminders in calendar. Like I never used it in calendar. Yeah. But if you used it in calendar, what did it do? Did it put it on your cal on your actual calendar as a reminder? It did. So you know, I used that a handful mm -hmm. of times, and then I think I lost faith in that. I now I just create an actual calendar event for a specific day and time so that I know that I'll be reminded of it. And then you've got your assistant reminders. And did those show up in your calendar? I don't even know. Like at least if it's all happening inside of a single app and not presented in all these different places as different things, then I guess we know where to go. Like some cohesion is good. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether this is uh, Google being Google or actually that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> It's cool. I think it's a little bit of both, to be honest with yeah, you, which is yeah. like it's very easy to uh, harp and on it and make fun of Google for these consolidations and these changes. And, you know, I got my email as a Google wallet is here and I just laughed. Right. Yeah, but yeah. Um, uh, but sometimes they do make sense. Right. And, and and as someone who likes to keep track of tasks and reminders and things like that, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. So. Yeah. yeah, I'm kind of like you, Jason. I found the calendar integration a little ham fisted. Like I, I wanted a reminder. But I like, so for example, I had like a daily reminder and then it created a daily calendar event. So I'm looking at my calendar and all of a sudden now, I mean, I know this is like kind of small potatoes, but it, it was kind of visually noisy. I was like, yeah, I, yeah. I know it, it. So it, it just didn't feel like it was a feature or app that got taken care of or had much maintenance or afterthought. It's like they put it in there and that was kind of like it. So I think I agree. I don't. I don't mind them changing things around. It's just funny given the history of everything else. But I mean, Google's a huge company. Their their products end up siloed, and so I guess what yep. what's what's the solution for them? They keep creating competing products that cannibalize each other's features or users, or they just bite the bullet and you know go through the great assimilation or great right. I right. can't think of it where the ends with TIO went to, to, to combination. Yeah. All right, or, yeah, combination. Yeah, I don't know. Assimilation kind of works too. Assimilation, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm just thinking about like there there are times where I will open up my calendar, my Google calendar, and I'll notice up in the what is it, the full day areas where the 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 reminders would go and they would be blue mm -hmm. and it would have the little, you know, I think it's the mm -hmm. fingers or something like that, yeah, the cross, cross fingers, fingers or whatever. Yeah. And then I'd open that up and I'd realize there's like a whole list of reminders that I never like yeah. done. I never said done. And I don't know how many months they've just been like residing in there and not totally obvious. You know what I mean? It got it, it, the, the reminders in calendar and that integration was really easy for me to lose track of, which is weird because I look at the calendar all the time. So I don't know why. So now, you know, it's like I said, I, I create an actual calendar event and I put it somewhere. And that way, when that comes up, I get that reminder that I'm really looking for that that moment where it's like at three o'clock, you're doing this thing because it's on your to do list. And I go, oh, OK. And, you know, I just didn't get that with with calendar integrated reminders. So maybe this will help. I don't know. It also might give more of a reason to actually use the tasks app because I think I have it installed. <laughs> And I never mm -hmm. use it. <laughs> so yeah. there you go. Or I can just continue using a pen and paper like I have been oh. <laughs> all the time. What what uh what century is it? I don't really know. Anyway. Duck Dodgers, I don't know. <laughs> duck duck go. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Now we're going to enter into uh, Chrome Paradise, whatever you want to call it, Chrome Land. Uh, Chrome for Android uh, has a cool new feature that you might not know exists, and you probably don't because it's hidden in the flag section. Uh, it's fingerprint protected incognito tabs. So Ron Amadio from Ars Technica uh, also uh, wrote about this, Had has the, uh, the command that you need to type in in order to enter it is featured in his article. 
you know, it's a hidden feature. I could say it out loud, but it would just be a jumble of, of colons and slashes and dashes and everything like that. So I'm just going to say, go check out Ron Amadio's article if you want to activate it. But this is in the flag section. A lot of people don't, you know, even ever venture into the flag section of Chrome. Uh, but this is where a lot of kind of things are tested. Apparently, this is in the stable, the latest stable version of Chrome for Android, and it locks incognito sessions when you leave the app. The next time you open up Chrome, you're going to be asked to unlock the tabs, and you can do that with your fingerprint scan, which kind of makes a lot of sense. You know, if, if, if you want to block off anyone from seeing this incognito session, why not put it behind a lock of some sort? And uh, apparently this is a, a feature that Chrome for iOS has had for a couple of years. And that kind of blows me away. Not, not from the petty like, oh, well, Apple shouldn't have something that we don't. But like, why would, why would that exist on Chrome for iOS and not Chrome for Android? Like, they kind of both are the same in the, you know, biometrics and stuff as far as I know. So why would, why would they withhold that? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Nobody knows. I, I, Nobody yeah, knows. I'm looking for a definitive answer. I, no, I, I know one of you knows the answer to this. No, I generally do want to know. I want somebody who developed it to tell me like what, <laughs> what it is that. Like is what so is the thing that between... keeps that? Because this isn't the only time that that's happened either. Sometimes there mm -hmm. are just features that appear there, but never make their way over or do, but a couple of years later. And it's like, I don't think there's like a technological reason why it's, is it just that the developers like forgot about it or it could be yeah, like, maybe know. there was a requirement for them, for Apple to accept. That's what I was thinking. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Apple required yeah. it. And then they yeah. had to work backwards from the iOS version to integrate it into Android. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. You know, Put the resources on iOS first because that's how you keep the Google apps in the app store. Yeah. Yeah, that very well could be. Could be. Uh, especially with, with Apple and its uh, proclamations around, uh, you know, privacy and all that. So, yeah. Very proclamations. Correct. Proclamation. Is that the, is that the right word for that? No, I'm, I'm sincere. It's a proclamation. <laughs> Decrees. Right, right, right. So there you go. There's a feature. If you want to look for it, uh, it's pretty easy to find. You just got to type in the thing that you, uh, that you find on, on Ron's article. So go check it out. Not my article. Well, well yeah, yeah, Ron yeah, Amadio. Ron, Ron. Ron Richards right. is not writing for Ars Technica as far as In I know. The meanwhile, while this is all going on, I just reset Google Play to factory default, and I'm now rebooting because <sighs> it's like the entire Google Play services seem to be borked on my phone right now. So, oh, wow. Uh, wow. This, is, this is all happening live during the show, by the way. Mm. So, we'll, yeah, that's what we're dealing with. I just I just rebooted. We'll see if that works. So we'll, it changed from the old icon back to from the new icon back to the old icon. It was pretty cool. So let us so. know in twenty minutes when you realize you have yeah. the factory reset your phone. And uh, I'm really hope I'm really hoping that's not the direction this is going in because I'm leaving on vacation in two days. And oh I really boy, don't have no, to do you that. definitely don't want but, to start from scratch yeah. right before vacation. Yeah. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that Google Play Services just kind of wakes up and starts working magically. But we'll <laughs> I hope I hope so as well. Well, if Ron's story, wet your appetite for Chrome tips, our <laughs> very own J.R. Rayfield from Android Intelligence has a two-part Chromocopia of Ooh. tips for Google Chrome. So what you got for us, J.R.? Hey, gang. Today I want to talk Chrome. I've got a couple of really cool, completely hidden shortcuts to share with you. And now these aren't the standard Chrome Android shortcut fare, you know, the stuff you've heard about a million times by now and a inside and out like what, swiping down from the top of the screen to see your open tabs or anything like that. In fact, I'd be willing to wager, and let me know if I'm right, that at least one of these will be completely new to you. Let's find out. All right, so first, you know how Chrome always shows you the total number of tabs you have open at any given moment up there in its upper right corner? It's a little something I like to think of as my Android browser badge of shame. That number, man. Whew, it just somehow always seems to get embarrassingly high over time, doesn't it? Is it just me? Well, either way, get this. If you press and hold that box for about a second, you'll see a splendidly useful menu of time-saving tab options pop up. It's hands down the fastest way to close your current tab or open a new one, be it regular or incognito, without wasting a single second or unnecessary action. And all you've got to do is realize it's there. Next, tap the actual address of whatever site you're looking at in Chrome on your phone right now, whatever site you've got pulled up right now, go ahead and try if you want. 
See what happens? That'll pull up a little used launch pad that's just jam-packed with awesome little time savers. The icons right next to the site's name will let you share the page anywhere, copy its address, edit the address within the Chrome address bar, just in case you need to adjust it in any way or whatnot. Well, that part's pretty obvious, I know, but beneath that, pay attention and you'll see some icons for other sites that Chrome thinks you might want to pull up next. And beneath that should be some search terms that are in some way related to whatever page you were just looking at. Now, for the really cool part, if you tap that line with the search suggestions, the one that says related to this page, Chrome will collapse that list of search suggestions down. And a lot of times it'll then show you a second list beneath that with specific recent searches that you've performed, either on your phone or on any other device where you're signed into the same account. And you can then hop right back to those searches with just one more tap. Kind of handy, right? We'll stop there for now. We'll pick up with two more useful Chrome shortcuts next week. And these two, these are ones that I will be really, really impressed if you already know about. The challenge is on. We will see. Keep me posted. Hey, if you love shortcuts as much as I do, you've got to check out a cool little course I put together called the Android Shortcut Super Course. It's a full week of lessons featuring some of my favorite tucked away time savers all throughout Android. You can check it out for yourself. Sign up now for free at androidintel.net slash twit. Just look toward the bottom of the page to find it. That link again is androidintel.net slash twit. I'll see you there and I'll see you right back here next week. Some very questionable search history there, <laughs> JR. Um, okay, so I thought we'd, we'd uh, do something uh, a little fun. We all have phone with Chrome installed on it. So I want okay. everybody to to open up their Chrome browser and we're all going to read how many tabs we have siloed away in that in that little box. Well, that's not nice. Well, I mean it I mean Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really curious. Mine I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Mine's 54 apparently. Apparently wow. I have 54 links and and I do go in there Wait. every once in a while and just like close them all. I don't know how they build up. They just do. What wins? Is it a low number or a high number? Oh, no. I, uh, I it's get, like golf. <clears throat> it's, if it's no, like it's, golf, I think it's going to be I a word for both. Yeah. The, I've got, so Jason, I'll, I'll see your 54 and match that with 10. So you've only got 10. I've only got 10. So you, so you manage your, your open, like you close them as you go along. I oh, do. Okay. I do not do that. I eventually, although I haven't point. done it in a few days because I see about like three days worth of like tab, like Mets magic number. Um, Wait, there's uh, a second way in auto fiction. There's a, for second. some reason I saw, for some reason I searched Tim Cook's parents. There's a second <laughs> part of this question. You guys, <laughs> you're wondering if they actually raised him right after last week. I, yeah. I don't know. It clearly was related to the, the messaging thing. Like, I don't know what, what my train of thought was, but I wanted to know Tim Cook's parents were alive. <laughs> and it needs to be how many tabs do you have open in each tab group and how many tab groups do you have? open? Wait a minute. Tab groups. Yeah. I, don't have, I don't have any tab yeah. groups. Oh, come on, Jason. I don't have any tab groups. I that just, was, Burke, I counted for that. It was 10. I had 10 tabs open in, okay. in, a, in like seven groups or something like that. So Yes, yeah, so you have how many pages open and how, and how many in each group? I, I never have more than two tabs open in a group, though, because I, 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 I always close them. So y You guys are using groups on your Chrome for Android? Yeah. Not on purpose. Yeah. It, it Not just, on purpose. Just never, happen, on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> never on purpose. Never on purpose. I do. It happen. Oh, really? I don't know how to navigate. Yeah, very because well. I I do online shopping, and I don't want to download the I app, mean, so I'll have like a tab group <laughs> open to both places. I'm like, like window what shopping. What am I missing at. out on? You're not missing out on anything. I, I know. Well, how how am I not accidentally doing groups? I just have a bunch of random links. You know. Anyways, uh, I'm apparently missing the boat on something. Okay, so 54 was me. Ron was 10. Yeah. Uh, when? Where, where are you at? <laughs> I'm I heard 12 years old. I have 69 tabs open. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So how many Sorry, tab nice. groups? Ignore me. Uh, probably none, actually. I, I avoid them like the like the plague now. No tab yeah. groups. Nope. Okay. No, no, no. All right. So you're currently in the lead if what we're looking for is who who has the most open. Flo, it comes down to this. Actually, well, I, I want to know where Burke's at too, but Flo, what about you? Um. Okay. We'll, we'll do this on my primary device, yeah, which yeah, I yeah. haven't been using very much because oh, okay. uh, change things. I literally have one tab open. Oh, just... oh, wow. But wait, wait. Ask me DuckDuckGo. Oh, uh... How many in DuckDuckGo? 
I have 12. Okay. All right. You're still not, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is going, still not winning and you're not mm -hmm. losing. So <laughs> it's because Wait. I'm like, I'm a stickler about just, I don't like having all those yeah. open tabs. But see, that's the thing with, with Chrome on Android. It's really easy for them to just like exist uh, here. Sorry. It's really easy for them to just exist in their own little silo. Like I never, I never care until I notice the number and then I go in there and I swipe them all away. But you know what? I'm, I'm not actually battling 54 links at any given time on my phone. You know what I mean? So it's easy for me to forget. Burke, where are you at? I have three tab groups, but only th one in each tab. Okay. But on my old phone, I would I would have probably four tab groups with anywhere from like six or seven to more per search. Per group. But it's only because... Like they changed the way that Chrome deals with it, and then you're they kind of force you. Like it's kind of it seems arbitrary. Like you can't just do open and tab. It's like now I have to open in a new tab group. Hmm. So I don't know, but is it? I, and I close them all the time too. So unless it's like I'm doing research for something, and then I just leave it open because I come back to it. Do you do you all open Chrome, open a new tab, and then go from there, or do you just do your searches in the just the do search it from bar? there? From the search oh, bar. Oh no! I open. There. I open. I, cro I open Chrome and say new tab, and then do it from there. I never do Same. that. This is the wow. difference. Okay, this is the difference. Yeah. Then I think we've spotted the difference. I, I ne never use the search. I bar. don't even. Yeah. I don't even keep Chrome on my on my home screen, because I always wow. feel like it's it's pointless. Like, I there's this search bar down at the bottom of my screen, right? So anytime I want to go to the web to do something, oh, I just go there. It's and because you have it a in. pixel. Yes, I suppose so. Well, uh, some of us don't use Google phones, but the, and there's no well, okay, all right, yeah, and I guess they wouldn't install uh, that search bar there by default. Well, if they did, the EU yeah, would probably slam them with a big antitrust. Well, uh, no, rule. I just want to <laughs> add that the problem is that like on the One Plus Nine. Um, the the search bar that you get in the Discover screen or whatever it's called now, the feed, is not the same search as the Chrome search. Mm -hmm. oh, the okay. Google app search. Okay. Yeah, I, I have that problem where sometimes if I'm in Chrome, I'm, I'm like searching for something similar to shopping and something, and I kind of want to keep all my search results in one place. If I mess up or just forget myself and then go to the Google search tab. That's like a different browsing history history. Yeah, yeah. So then I'm like, where did my tab go? So I, I, it's more of a choice because I have too many choices to just stick with Chrome because then I get all my tabs and organize not in tab groups, but just, you know, yeah. it's all there. And see how, how, I mean, obvi obviously I just end up collecting links. That's why my number is so high, but how I end up doing it, I'm realizing now is I use that search bar for like 99% of any of the internet. Like I want to go to a website. I will, I will use that search bar and do it. If I want that site to persist when, mm -hmm. when I go away, then I go to the menu and I say open in Chrome and then that mm -hmm. moves it over to Chrome or that just kind of makes it reside in Chrome going forward. Otherwise it will just disappear. And I, I guess in my mind, I'm like, well, that's great because most of the time I go to web pages, I don't want them to persist. I want them to go away. But what it ends up meaning is any of those times that I do move it over to Chrome, I never clear it out. So that number increases, but it's less than if I was to do all of my uh, searching in Chrome, I suppose. So anyways, eh, interesting. We all have different ways of doing that. I like it. I love that discovery and discoveries cool. like it. Wow. All right. Thank you for, uh, for the tip JR, by the way, it obviously gave us something to, <laughs> to think about and we'll look forward to next week's part two of the saga of Chrome, uh, from you. So thank you for that. All right, let's take a break and thank the sponsor of this episode. And then we will get into some feedback and then round this show out. Cause we are a little long right now. This episode of all about Android is brought to you by policy genius we pay hundreds of dollars per year to protect our homes, to protect our cars, even our phones. But too many of us aren't taking steps to protect our families' finances. Mortgage payments, private student loans, other types of debt, you know, they don't just disappear if something happens to you. A life insurance policy can actually provide your loved ones with a financial cushion that they can use to cover those costs. And it can provide you with peace of mind that even in a worst case scenario, they're going to be protected, right? I've got a family, you know, I've got two little girls. I want to be sure that 
my family is protected if something ever happens to me. It's it's incredibly important. It sets the foundation for their life. If that, you know, I don't want that to happen, obviously, but if that were to happen, it makes all the difference. So having life insurance through your job may not actually be enough. Most people need up to 10 times more coverage to properly provide for their families. Inflation is driving up prices, as you know, for just about everything lately. But life insurance rates are actually down from this time last year. And since life insurance typically gets more expensive as you age, that means now is actually a great time to buy. And here is kind of how it all works. If you want to know how Policy Genius works, this is what you can expect. Policy Genius is an insurance marketplace. It makes it easy to compare quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential in one place so you can find the lowest price on life insurance. You could save 50% or more on life insurance just by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Your options start at 17 bucks a month for $500,000 of coverage. You just click the link on the show page or you can head to policygenius.com slash AAA and there you'll get a personalized quote in minutes and find the right policy for your needs. The licensed agents at Policy Genius actually work for you, not the insurance companies, by the way. They're on hand through the entire process. They're going to help you understand your options so you can make decisions with confidence. Policy Genius does not add on extra fees. They don't sell your information to third parties. They have thousands of five-star reviews across Google and Trustpilot. Policy Genius also has options that that offer coverage in as little as a week and avoids unnecessary medical exams. Uh, they've helped over 30 million people shop for insurance and place more than $150 billion in coverage. And by the way, while you're there, Policy Genius offers quotes for home, auto, pet, renters insurance, and more. Head to policygenius.com slash AAA. When you do that, you're going to get your free life insurance quotes and you'll see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash A-A-A. And we thank Policy Genius for their support of All About Android. All right, it's feedback time. AAA at twit.tv, 347 show A-A-A. Uh, people also email us sometimes with videos, right, Ron? I love the video mail. This is yeah. the best. Um, so Brant from Hillsboro, New Jersey, right here in my backyard, uh, says I've been in a, I've been a triple A fan for many years. I've recently switched back to an Android phone, pixel six, and I have a question on dismissing Google assistant. Uh, any feedback or suggestions you could offer would be greatly appreciated. And let's see, let's see what Brant provided here in terms of video. Hey guys, Brant here. I've been a fan of triple A for many, many years. Um, I have a quick question regarding Google assistant. I have my Pixel 6 here running Android 13. And one of the things I noticed that kind of annoys me is um, it doesn't go away after you're done using it. Example. Hey, set an alarm for six o'clock. Okay, I see it's set. Now I don't need it on the screen anymore. And is there any way to just make it automatically go away? Or do I have to interact with the phone in order to make that go away? Anyway. Appreciate your help and uh, have a great day. Yeah, it's funny that it's funny that he says it because just the other day I was in the kitchen and I've got my phone and I've got the Nest Home Hub on the shelf in the kitchen and I was asking it to play a song or something like that and I was interacting with the Nest Hub but the little bottom part of the assistant lit up on the phone and I just remember looking at it just shaking my head and like pressing the display button to turn it off because I'm like I don't need that and when I turned the phone back on it was gone so that's my trick I just turned the display off. So I don't know what you guys do, but yes, I have the, that thing likes to pop up and not go away in my experience. Sometimes. Yeah. It's like a visual mm -hmm. feedback to that's persistent yeah. to let you know, Hey, I did the thing you wanted me to do so that if you're like driving or whatever, and you look over, you know, you don't have to look up over right when it happened or whatever. Like, I don't know what the rationale is for it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've honestly never noticed <laughs> until, until, uh, you sent in the video. And I think what I just end up doing is tapping anywhere on the screen and it goes away. I yeah. curse first and then tap anywhere on the screen. Does it so. annoy right. you? It is annoying. It's annoying. It, right? it's, it's annoying. It yeah. Especially at night yeah. uh, when it's, it's kind of just by accident or we didn't even say, hey, mm. which we, happens a lot more lately. I don't know if anyone else had this, but I feel like I'm getting a lot of uh, false positives on the hot phrase. Yeah. Lately, so, yeah. Yeah. 
I hmm. usually actually turn this off on the phones because I already have all these speakers in my house. And uh-huh. um, like Wynn said, it's really annoying when it pops up on the phone because I have the developer setting to leave the screen on when it's uh, charging. Because oh, I, okay. that's how I do my testing. Yep. And so like sometimes I'll wake up, you know, from a deep sleep and like my display is on. Oh, it's like, and it's why? all bright over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who summoned you? <laughs> Who it was it? Maybe if you were sleeping, maybe you, maybe you did in your sleep. I know it's uh, oh, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> but but yeah, I don't like using it on the phone for that reason. I still mm-hmm. feel like it's kind of a jittery experience. Yeah, gosh, I've, I've never really thought twice about it. I just when I see it, I just tap anywhere other than that little box I tap on the, you know, outside of it on the screen. It just goes away. Doesn't bother me too much to do that, but I can see why it would be, why it would be annoying. So, well, it takes away the whole point of hands free. Yeah, that's true. Okay. All right. When you put it that way, that makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But I guess it wouldn't preclude you from firing off another voice thing. Like, can you say turn off the screen? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't even know this. Can you say I will say, hey, hey, mm, go off? away. Yeah, I say go away. Go away. And she's like, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know how to help you with that. Or actually, she might just go away. She's pretty good with that. Yeah, it just doesn't say try. anything else. No. Yeah. No. Sorry. Doesn't have to justify its existence in that moment. Me. Yeah. <laughs> Turn off the screen. Eh, nope. Yeah. I can't close the screen for you, but you can press the power button to lock your phone. Oh, you, it just I bet told Samsung, me to. I bet Bixby could do it. Bixby is no. able to do a lot of the device control stuff. I mean, I it's don't actually, know for sure that yeah. it could, can do that, but it's yeah. better at that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Bixby, hey, good news for Bixby. Bixby. It can do that. Bixby, well, little Bixby. Bixby. The little Bixby uh, that could. It's better at turning itself <laughs> off because that's all people do with it. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. It's like, oh, you, you turned, you, you activated me. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for uh, for sending in that video, Brent. Uh, really great production value, too. I love that. So thank yeah. you. All right. When you got the next one. Yeah. So we've got a uh, mail from Jeremiah P. from Toronto. And Jeremiah lets us know that, well, not lets us know, but writes us saying, you talked about sound notifications as part of the Android feature drop. So I'm not sure if it's limited to just Android phones or Nest speakers as well. Google can steal the idea if they're not already working on it, but I'd like to this fe- I'd like this feature extended to Nest speakers. My doorbell is not that loud, and I often miss it if I have something playing in my bedroom. But I have Nest speakers that can hear the doorbell and ones which can relay that information to me either on my phone or my other Nest speakers in my bedroom, like a broadcast message. In this way, this feature can be useful to everyone and not just those who have hearing issues. And I think that's a really great point. I think... Uh, I'm not the first person to say this, like a lot of accessibility folks say, say this, but it, it kind of is like the high tide lifts all boats. So mm-hmm. making something accessible to folks with, say, um, a low hearing makes it more accessible for all of us. So I think it's a great idea. Love it. Super yeah. good idea. Oh, I, I have a feeling that this... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say that I have a feeling that this is going to come to a future Nest device because the whole point of... Uh, what Google's doing with the smart home, at least, is ambient computing. And so this mm-hmm. would be a part of ambient computing is having a computer that could sort of like listen in to audio that you've pre-recorded and kind of let you know. Um, and it's using the Soli sensors to know if you're within reach. Mm-hmm. So. Something oh, the forward. Soli sensors that aren't totally dead yet. They're they're not dead guys. They're just going to be rolled up into something else. That's what Google does with everything. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Um, this could make a good uh, sorry area 120 project because it does have to do oh, with AI. Yeah. There you go. Um, yeah. So true. there you go. Next project. Um, I I did want to note uh, when I re- when I was looking into this a little bit, they if you go to support page for Google, they say that if you are on Android nine or android p pi and below and you have sound notifications turned on you can't use the hot phrase that wasn't apparent before so if you have turned on sound notifications and you have nine and below don't be surprised if your hot phrase stop work stops working um but i guess if you're like us you probably didn't have it on in the first place or Mm. or just annoyed at it anyway so Mm -hmm. but yeah i i just thought that was very interesting because that was just a small little note in the support in the the support page so there you go nice 
Right on. And finally, Flo, you've got the honors. I really do appreciate that uh, I get this honor, just in all sincerity, uh, because this it's very fun part of the show. And so uh, this week I am reading the... Voicemail of the week. <laughs> voicemail of the week. That's right, we have a voicemail. Here we go. Hey, guys, it's Jesse from Dallas, Texas. Long-time listener, probably since episode one and even way back from Buzz Out Loud. Just wanted to say you guys are kicking behind. I uh, love your show. You guys have always had an interest take on uh, every topic, even when there's nothing to report. However, I know you guys are very insightful. Now, I wanted to see if you can chime in on something that I've been looking into and I cannot figure out. So I was able to back then navigate um, with Android Auto on my Android phone, and it went away. Then uh, Google started to deploy that into Google Maps, where you can have access to your music, et cetera, things of the nature there. And now I cannot find that either <laughs> in either app. Can you guys uh, let me know uh, if you know anything about that or how I can get some kind of feature of that back on Google Maps where I can control the music or switch to the next track um, or podcast when I listen to you guys while I'm driving, keep my hands free. Thank you guys again. Keep rocking. Great show. Thank you, Justin. Okay. So this is a multi-part answer. The first answer is I'm going to show you how to get into assist, uh, assistant driving mode on a Pixel phone. Okay. Um, so we're not going to do the hot word here. Instead, I'm going to manually say, enter driving mode. Okay. And now this is driving mode right here. Um, so what you get, it all, it kind of looks like, I'm trying to make this work. It kind of yeah. looks like Android Auto on the phone screen that you might have been used to seeing uh, back in the day. And this is what you would use. Um, it Right now it defaults, uh, let me just tell you, right now it defaults to, I think that's Google Podcasts, which I don't use. I use Pocket Casts. Uh, it has a messaging option, a calling option, and of course a where to option so that I can um, I can set maps. And so, uh, I don't know. Once you do enter into navigation, oh goodness, hold on. It's, thinks I'm talking. <laughs> thinks I'm talking. No, I'm not talking. Um, so that is the assistant driving mode. And uh, if you have like a, a dongle in your car, like the Rove Bolt, uh, for instance, I have that in my car, then automatically you get all the hands-free features that come with so that you can use the hot word. Now, here's what happens when you try and enter driving mode on a non-Pixel device. Enter driving mode. Okay, that's right. It, it doesn't. It Hold does on. Nothing. It does nothing. I have to go. Yeah, it does nothing. So it's a pixel only feature. I don't know okay. that I realized. Yeah. That. So let me let me explain. It's not gonna. I'm not gonna actually be able to show you the demo because it only works with the Rove Bolt in my car. Because what happens is when I get into the car, the Rove Bolt is set as a driving accessory. Uh, on the settings of my OnePlus. And so okay. I am able to say, hey, G, bring up assistant driving mode. But when it comes up on the OnePlus 9, it crashes. And so what I'm trying to show you is that there's a difference between having the Pixel launcher and another kind of device. Mm. Um, I'm going to try this with Samsung now just to, just to seal the deal here. Enter driving mode. Okay, one moment. Okay, so it does work on Samsung devices. So this go. is something to kind of like keep in mind that the phone that you have, whatever interface you're running, may have not like fully optimized for driving mode, which is something that really frustrated me. I thought for a long time that it just wasn't working for me, but I realize it's because I've been using the OnePlus 9. But 
the easiest way to enter into it is to just ask the voice command to do it for you. You can also uh, create a home screen shortcut to access the assistant driving mode. So in the in Google Maps, in the navigation mode, you can tap on the app launcher and then tap add driving mode to home screen. There you go. You yeah. could also do a Google action block if you wanted to set up something a little more obvious, like maybe you want to make a button on the home screen that you can press. So that's something to kind of think about. Or you can do that other method that I said, which is to get one of those devices that works um, with your Android device and kind of recognizes it as a hands-free device in your car. And then once you enter the car and Bluetooth turns on, then that can that driving mode can turn on. So there are a couple of ways that you can set it up, but the good news is that it does exist. It's available. Uh, the bad news is that it is nothing like what Android Auto on the phone screens was, which is sad. And, yeah, and I'm sad about so it too. Totally different. You know, it's, what's interesting to yeah. me is I never, like I, I use maps. I've probably talked about this a million times at this point on the show, but I, I use maps a lot. And when I'm using maps, I get that little kind of bottom of the screen, like fifth of the bottom of the screen with very light media controls. That's the most that I ever see as far as driving mode functionality is concerned. Um, I went through, I had linked to an article, uh, what is it, a, a Chrome Unboxed article that, that kind of walks through some of what you were talking about, Flo, as far as going in there and creating a shortcut on your home screen to launch directly into assistant driving mode. And when I launch that and I see that full screen interface, like... I, I never, like, I'm there is never a time when that full screen interface comes up for me. It, apparently, you just have to know that this thing exists and you have to know exactly how to launch it in order to ever see it or pair it with a device like you're talking about. If I paired this device with the Rove device that you're talking about and did Rove it- Bolt. Or the Bolt, yeah, the Bolt device, then it, then it would automatically say that device means launch this, the driving mode. Is that right? I believe so. Um, I believe mm. I'm saying that with not a hundred percent, but it's 90% just percent certainty. It, it's so interesting to me. Oh, sorry. What do you got there? Uh, not relevant to the conversation yet. Please continue your thought, Jason. And then I oh. want to show you all something. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm yeah. just testing. Bert caught me. <laughs> no, it's all good. All good. Um, yeah, I just, I think, I just think that it's interesting how difficult this driving mode that isn't as good as Android Auto was, but how difficult it is to even get there in the first place. It really is kind of like this hidden secret that you have to know exists. Meanwhile, they got rid of this situation, this app that really worked pretty well for this stuff. In in uh, And the trade-off was this, yet this is really hard to find. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, it's strange thinking in my opinion. I don't understand yeah, it. Yeah, it, it's pretty frustrating. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It, is changed a lot about how I drive around. Yeah. And the third party apps, by the way, pale not, in comparison. Not, not nearly as good. Yeah. Yeah. Not even. No. Uh, what, what, what's on your mind when, um, so this is not exactly to do with this conversation. This has to do with, uh, tablets and, uh, kind of how sometimes I complain about, uh, just in general, like support for tablets. So this is my full, this is actually the first time I've ever navigated because I, I was trying to like follow the steps and I try to get navigation modes. This is the first time I've pulled up navigation on my Z Fold 4. So of course it has this little like onboarding screen and all I see, and I can't see, that's what I was trying to, all I see is this picture of pigeons crossing the road. Yeah. And this is a very tablet, this is actually a very Z Fold thing. It's hard to see, but basically for, and also for those on, on yeah, like just the it. audio only, what I see is a picture of some pigeons crossing the road and the word and, and at the bottom of the dialogue is got it. So like that's it. it. I don't, that's I it. just got it. It just says got it. And so what actually is happening is this is a problem with large screen devices and not supporting them properly. Cause if I scroll, there actually mm -hmm. is a message. It's like, welcome to Google navigation. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes on the road, yada, yada. So this is a large tablet problem. Actually, this is very specific to this tablet is that, and this is why we need Google and other developers to do better at large screen support. Because the problem with this, and I'm sorry, I'm going to get real technical, is that if you ever see something like this where you don't quite understand why on a tablet looks like yeah, this, it's yeah. because this image is fitting width. Right. And so it's shoving all the content down. Now, what's really interesting about the Z Fold 4 if I get my focus back, is that because it's mostly square, it's actually a very odd aspect ratio for devs to handle. So I can, I can, I bet you that whoever tested this tested it on a regular landscape tablet, yeah. tested it on a phone. And then this very, you know, like this, this 
very successful foldable because it's square ends up looking like this. So hi, uh, other devs and Google, you got to fix this stuff, man. <laughs> like this is the kind of stuff like yeah. it's, it's, this is I when mean, God, I have to, I have to, every time, sometimes on the Z fold, I have to enter into rotate and then I have to rotate yes. the tablet. Yeah. So like I'm, instead of using it like this, I rotate it mm -hmm. like this. And then that's when yes. I get the full like situation. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, I guess I just need to rotate it. I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's like, cause this is just into landscape and this is just, mm -hmm. it's, it's, so yeah, that's. It's just really interesting, and it's part of the yeah. gap again because it's yeah. all square. I anyway. mean, yeah, it, right, right. And, and that's that's the big the big issue with that particular device in general is that it's not your standard tablet um, layout. You know, it's it's not the obvious portrait landscape. It really right. is closer to a square. And so, how many devices are are square devices that we have? We don't really have those. So I'm sure even Google does not really think to develop for a, a square. You know, so I just yeah. had to see well, that I had to rant um, yeah. because this is a Samsung Z Fold Four and it's Google Maps. So yeah. anyway, I'm done. I swear yeah, I promise. There we I'm go. Done. It's <laughs> so back to Jesse. I just want to say thank you for. Uh, calling in about this yes that's yeah. what you did you called in thank you for calling in about this because um yeah this is something that hasn't really been advertised by google although we knew about it but that's just because we've got our little media bubble so that's why and i hope that helps you please let us know if it does and uh the good news is that this week you were the voicemail of the week good job jesse keep those voicemails coming all right, we've reached the end of this episode of All About Android. Flo, it's great having you back. I'm happy you're feeling better. Um, and I know that you're in the midst of a whole lot of device wrangling right now, so I hope things get a little bit easier for you. What do you want to leave people with? What, what should they know? Uh, well, we're we're entering a fun season right now, so you can read all my coverage at gizmodo.com or you can go to flowrights.tech. That is my little vanity URL. And a reminder, I do have a podcast. I do a podcast on the Relay FM network with Andy and Notco all about Google. We also talk about Android and sometimes we talk about other things and uh, we do that every week. We usually publish Wednesday or Thursdays. That is called Material. Or Thursday or Friday, I should say. Sorry. That po that podcast is called Material. Everybody should check yes. it out. I forgot to say out. the name of it. Whoops. <laughs> I got you. I got you, Flo. Thank you. Always fun having you Thank on. You. Appreciate it. Uh, Ron, what uh, what do you want to leave people with? That I'm baffled and in app in app purchases doesn't seem to work at all. I'm oh, so the, for some reason. What is going on? Is, it's crazy. Oh, no. It's it's so so for those of you keeping track at home, I'll keep playing with it. I'll keep working on it. But uh, if you get uh, error, uh, you get an error message in the little uh, thing that comes up, and it's a uh, Google Play Store error DF dash DF E R H dash O one. And I've just been looking online and I've like, I've cleared the cache on Google Play services. I've cleared the cache on, I, I've reinstalled Google Play and all this other stuff and it still doesn't work. I don't know. I gotta see. I don't, I, little, I've turned the phone on and off like nine times during the show, Burke. Uh, yeah. So we'll see. Mm. So that's what I'm going to be doing this week. You can follow me on Twitter or on Instagram at RonXO. And uh, uh, all the apps work. The phone is functional. It's just for some reason, Google Play in app purchases just don't work, which could be a good thing, to be honest. Uh, to make me stop, you know, spending money. So that's good. <laughs> well, I guess yeah. there's that. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck. I hope it all works out. Hopefully it doesn't affect to... Google Pay because I use that all the time. Yeah, Android, right. So. Yeah. Who knows? Jeez. Who knows? Yeah. We'll all see. Right. Good luck, Ron. Uh, what, what about you, Win? What do you want to leave people with? Uh, I am an Android dev. I often talk about Android dev stuff, not quite as ranty and as pigeon filled as tonight, but if you want to find my technical talks, video and code, you can find them on my web website, randomlytyping.com and just find me otherwise at Queen, Con Queen Code Monkey on Twitter and Instagram. There we go. Thank you, Wynn. Thank you. So much fun tonight. What a great show. Um, big thanks yeah. to uh, J.R. Rayfield. 
for his uh, app tips, Android Intelligence, of course. Check him out there. Thanks to Burke in the studio for pushing buttons, occasionally talking and uh, doing the news bumper, much as it is what it is. And uh, thank you to Victor <laughs> behind the scenes for editing and publishing the show, doing everything that we can uh, to bring you the show uh, so you don't have to go to the, the site and download it manually. Uh, it's good stuff. Thank you, Victor. You can find me at Jason Howell on Twitter. I also do Tech News Weekly with Micah Sargent every Thursday. So twit.tv slash TNW for that. Uh, don't forget Club Twit is at twit.tv slash club twit. If you are not a member, you should really think about uh, checking it out. It's an ad-free subscription tier for all of our shows. All of the ads removed. Even this ad that I'm reading right now is not in a club twit uh, ad-free uh, version of the feed. You also get exclusive uh, content, care of the twit plus podcast feed, uh, and a members only discord, access to the discord anyway, seven bucks a month. You can pay for the full year, $84 Per year, and we hope that uh, you'll check it out. But as for this show, we uh, do the show every Tuesday evening, so it publishes to the site uh, and to the feeds later in the evening, early the following morning, Wednesday morning. So just go to twit.tv slash AAA. You can find all the feeds so you can subscribe, and you don't have to go to the page and download it manually. It just all happens like magic. But that's it for this week's episode of All About Android. We'll see you next time. And that is next Tuesday. Bye, everybody. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and I am the host of Hands-On Photography here on Twit TV. I know you got yourself a fancy smartphone, you got yourself a fancy camera, but your pictures are still lacking. Can't quite figure out what the heck shutter speed means? Watch my show. I got you covered. Want to know more about just the ISO and exposure triangle in general? Yeah, I got you covered. Or if you got all of that down, you want to get into lighting, you know, making things look better by changing the lights around. I got you covered on that, too. So check us out each and every Thursday here on the network. Go to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe today.